If you've ever rooted for the Marines in Avatar, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like, comment, um, comment section is <clears throat> uh, indescribable. So go ahead and get down there and um, experience it for yourself. If you guys are looking to support the channel, there are multiple ways you can do that. Gun Mag Warehouse is one. They support my channel with... Uh, with uh, cold hard money and uh, so we support them by buying magazines from them. They're pretty cool. They don't ask for anything except that you uh, give them your business occasionally. In fact, I actually literally do buy magazines from them. Like I'm not just like, it's not just like the sponsorship. They actually do make, do offer good prices. Um, discount code grant them also for Vertex for plaid bags, all that kind of stuff. 25% off with them. It's out of control. LEX is like 6%, something like that. It, it saves on shipping. Get it because you have to actually train with guns. Otherwise we're just kind of collecting a bunch of pieces of metal and that's not weird because it's like a it's like a kid and with a train set in his mom's basement but anyhow today we're going to be talking about the zenith z5 and z5p which is this firearm right here before we launch into it disclaimers disclosures all that good stuff i actually didn't know a whole lot about zenith at all um prior to going to nra this year so when I went to NRA, I saw James Williamson there. If you're familiar with James Williamson, a pretty big name in the H&K world. Um, dare I say the name in the H&K world. I also worked for Haley Strategic for a while. Um, prior to that, Marine Corps, uh, working in that whole uh, SOCOM community. So a very knowledgeable man um, with a whole lot of experience. So I, when I saw him working at Zenith, it kind of piqued my interest in the company because this is a guy who can choose to work wherever he wants. So the fact that he went with Zenith... Um, was interesting to me so I talked with them and we decided that uh, I thought it'd be pretty cool to do a review based on uh, you know my kind of interaction with him and what he was telling me about the firearms so they sent me this firearm right here uh, no ammunition ammunition was provided by me um, after I got towards the end I did around 6,000 rounds on this particular uh, weapon mostly with an optic mounted um, after I did that James um, brought up a full auto Z5, which is a full size kind of MP5 variant. And I ran that thing on full auto, so pr for probably maybe six or 700 rounds or so. So understand where the relationship is there. I'm a good friends with James. I think he's a cool dude. Um, but just like anything else, I am uh, not afraid to pull punches on firearms or anything like that. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the Zenith firearm. So Zenith themselves is a importer. They do not make the firearm. The firearm itself is made by MKE. So if you're not familiar with MKE, in about the 70s or so, um, H&K uh, started licensing out their MP5 and their MPK, M5, MP5K variants to various companies. Um, MKE is one of the oldest producer of MP5 and MP5K variants in the world. They've been doing it since the 70s. They are HK licensed. They are made on HK machinery. So when it comes to pedigrees, the Z5 and Z5P probably have the most connection to H&K. They are pretty much H&K guns. Now, there are other companies that make them on H&K machinery. You know, uh, Greece has one, Britain has one, um, uh, Pakistan has one, but few of these companies actually import into the United States. So this one is imported and is just beautiful, just a very well-made design. And I don't think that's disputed anywhere. So let's talk a little bit about these. Specifically, what I want to get into right now is... Why would you choose like a 9mm subgun or an MP5 or a Z5 or a Z5P? So here's what it comes down to. The question has been asked, do 9mm subguns, do 9mm pistols, uh, no quotations, do they have a place nowadays? And I think that depends on you. Um, depends on how much uh, you love nostalgia. Now, what it depends on is what you need it for. So there is no doubting that 5.56, 300 black, that all these calibers perform better than 9mm in almost every instance, um, except for a few. And so those couple instances where they don't thrive are where this firearm could possibly make be kind of a choice for you. So first off, a 9mm pistol subgun, that type of thing, like the Z5P, is going to give you a low flash signature. So if you're... Um, using this for home defense, for example, and you are in a small house or something like that, or an apartment, um, it's great not to blind yourself, just as a quick note there. Um, also, 
low noise. So what that means is you're not going to be deafening yourself. You're probably not going to throw in like a pair of pelters before you go uh, and confront somebody who's breaking your home. Not to say that that's the only reason. Maybe you're a police department and you're going to very confined spaces. The MP5K slash Z5P is a very small package. And so it might be a better option than something like a short barreled AR. We also get into is over penetration. So I do understand with 556 that there are some very good rounds made nowadays that limit over, over penetration. But there's something to be said on using a lower powered round like the 9mm that lends itself to not over penetrating through walls and that type of thing. And there are some very good rounds made for a 9mm that work really good for that purpose. So again, those are two options that you have. Another thing is if you are, whether you be civilian or law enforcement, is uh, ammunition commonality. So 9mm is a very cheap ammunition source, easy to practice on. It's easy to have the same ammo type between a pistol and a subgun that you might have, whether it be a law enforcement or civilian. So that is definitely a good option to pick um, one of these firearms right here. Now, one common concern I do have with you running a 9mm subgun is armor penetration. So they say, oh, there's no 9mm that's armor penetrated. Now there is, and they're mostly restricted to law enforcement and military, which I do disagree with. Um, because I do believe that there should be limits on that type of thing, freedom. But um, these firearms do have armor piercing capabilities. Now, of course, that is going to be much shorter in distance compared to a 5.56 or 300 blackout, but let it be known that they are out there. Now, obviously, why would this not work for you? 9mm has limited range. You know, there's no doubt about that. You take a 9mm and you hit a target at 100 meters, you're going to have, uh, depending on shot placement, you have much less of an effect than you would with a 5.56, which just travels out further and has. Um, a little more reaching power, especially compared to 308. So you're so realize that you're limited in your range and ballistic performance. And there are a couple other reasons as well, but we'll kind of get into that as we go into pros and cons. So I'm not going to be able to tell you if this is a firearm for you, but what we can talk about is how uh, kind of awesome these are, or not awesome they are, with our pros and cons. So if you're not familiar with the MP5, um, let's say you've just never seen firearms before. Um, let's talk a quick moment about them. So these firearms are of course made um, as clones for the MP5 and MP5K. Those firearms are the most prolific submachine guns in the world, uh, fielded by 40 countries, used in constant conflicts uh, all throughout the world, even to today. Uh, I think that says something about the design that ever since the 60s, these firearms have been in constant use, whether that be because they're the best option or because they continue to work and they just don't break down. So there's something to be said about this firearm. There are some newer designs that have some really good options that in some cases eclipse this design, but nonetheless, there's something to be said about staying power. And this firearm undoubtedly has staying power. So let's talk about these excellent clones that are made by MKE and imported by Zenith. So right here we have the MKE Z5P. Um, what I want to point out about it is the fit and finish from MKE is just phenomenal. And you'll hear this a lot when it comes to people who review the Zenith a Z5. If you're looking for something that's just as close to the HK as you can get it, these are kind of hard to beat. They're just very well made. There are, there are, of course, there are some people who make them, you know, privately and in smaller batches. When it comes to large-scale manufacturer, MKE is a government facility, HK machinery, HK license, all that stuff. And for all intents and purposes, this is an HK gun pretty much. So it is just very well made. So one thing that is so nice about the um, Z5, Z5P is the roller delayed blowback. So if you're not familiar with that, that is the action by which this uh, firearm operates. Now I'm not gonna get too much into the nitty gritty of precisely how it works, other than to say that a lot of firearms that you're dealing with nowadays, like the UMP 9mm ARs, use just a direct blowback. So what that means is they have a heavy bolt, uh, round launches, it's going to push it back. It needs weight behind it in order to uh, counter all that recoil and that force of that round exiting. So because of that, you have really exaggerated recoil and your 9mm uh, AR, your 9, 9mm UMP or 45 UMP recoil much more than they should. In fact, in many cases, uh, the recoil is a little bit worse than 5.56, which is completely ridiculous. Why would you choose a 9mm subgun or a pistol or whatever at that point? when you could simply have a more powerful caliber that doesn't recoil as much. So what's nice about the roller delayed um, blowback is that when the round fires, due to the system that is used, they don't have to use a super heavy bolt to temper that to make the action work. So you have a very light bolt. The bolt also does not unlock until the bullet exits the barrel. 
Because of this, you have this really nice recoil impulse. I know that's my buzzword. I've said it so many times and people are bothering me about saying that word, but the recoil on these firearms is just buttery smooth. When you're in single action or semi-auto and you're firing this, it is just, it feels like nothing really. It, there's no recoil to speak of. It just feels great. And that's how a nine millimeter uh, firearm of this type should be. So it just feels wonderful. And what a roller delayed blowback uh, system does is it creates a mechanical advantage. Um, and the mechanical advantage is through the actual rollers that you see here that protrude out the side of the bolt. And what that allows to happen is when the, when the weapon goes into battery, these rollers extend out and they fit inside the recesses of the barrel extension. It fires from a closed bolt um, with a firing pin and firing pin spring. And when the weapon actually fires, <clears throat> the advantage holds the bolt in place in battery until the bullet leaves the barrel. So it's inherently more accurate in that case. Once the barrels, the bullets left the barrel, uh, the gas pressures equalize and the weapon will then go into recoil and that mechanical, me mechanical advantage uh, will come into play here. As the impact hits the bolt head, it moves through the bolt head into the internal locking piece and then into the bolt carrier. The bolt carrier starts to move to the rear and it pulls the locking piece with it. And as the locking piece goes with it, the rollers are now allowed to go inside the bolt. It goes outside the recess of the barrel extension and the entire weapon goes into recoil. Uh, so that momentary delay is what allows the weapon to be so stable and controllable, especially in fully automatic fire. If you're lucky enough to be able to own a full auto, which by the way, quick note as well, uh, there shouldn't be laws and regulations stating that uh, that make it hard to own some uh, full auto firearms. Um, the fact that you have to pay an absorbent amount of money to get one or that you need an SOT is absolutely ridiculous in my mind. But I don't make the laws, um, and, but we have to we follow them. But in any case, if you get to have a full auto uh, Z5 or Z5P, when you're firing this thing full auto, you can understand why this firearm has been around for so long and why this is used for it by so many special operations communities and SWAT teams and counterterrorism teams is because of that recoil cycle as that gun fires on full auto is super, super buttery smooth. And it just lends itself to keeping itself on target despite a higher cyclic rate, around 7 to 750 on a Z5 and even higher on the Z5P or the MP5K, around 800 to 900 or so. So... Despite that, this thing just stays on target. You can see it in my videos where I'm just shredding on steel targets and you can compare that to something like a UMP where it's a little bit harder to keep on target because of the recoil and the action of that firearm. So there is a lot to be said about roller delayed blowback. Just a fantastic design. Uh, it's been proven world round, right? It's reliable. They've been used for a long time. So if you're worried about this being like an, un like an untested concept, it's definitely not. Another great thing about these firearms are the barrels. Uh, the barrel is the heart of any gun. So on these barrels, they are cold hammer forged, which is what you want right there. So they are plenty accurate. I've been able to make shots up to 200 now. Uh, that, there's a little bit of flight time on that 9mm going 200 yards. Um, but nonetheless, I can definitely make those shots. This gun is, in my opinion, more accurate than I am. Uh, just like I say a lot of time, time, so I doubt you'll outclass it on accuracy. Now, if you try to mount like a, you know, a 16 power scope, uh, optic on this and try to take the course, it's not going to work. It's a 9 millimeter, but the point is it, is it is plenty accurate for the application for which it was designed, which is a closer engagement or a closer, closer target uh, uh, shots. So that is uh, as far as the barrel is concerned. Now, if you look at the end here on the Z5P, it does have two different suppressor attachment systems. So right here, we have a thread. We have threads on the end of our barrel right there with a thread protector, so I'm gonna screw that back on. We also have a tri-lug. So I've used both. Um, I, of course, prefer the tri-lug. I use an Omega 9K on this particular uh, pistol right here, and it was phenomenal, just so much fun. Uh, locked up perfectly. I've heard some people having troubles with certain tri-lugs, but the Omega 9K and their tri-lug adapter worked perfectly. You just simply push it down, rotate it over, click it up, and it locks on. Just a great design. And that design, is, again, proven has been around for a long time. <clears throat> kind of moving down the system here, uh, if we look at the handguard right here, um, this is just a standard handguard, a little finger stop right there to make sure my hand doesn't slide up and I don't shit off my fingers. But even still, most of the time I'm gripping this back by the mag like it's 1990 or it's Call of Duty or whatever. Um, just a LARPing hard. So we have the handguard. The handguard can be replaced with an M-Lock handguard from Zenith. 
They make a really nice design right here. So if you want to throw on all your tactical Gucci accessories and LARP in your mom's basement, you got these right here. They just rock. Um, moving up, you have a 45 degree cocking handle right here um, to actuate the gun and to load it and that type of thing. And I know people say not to slap it, but one time I didn't slap the HK charging handle very hard on an MP5 in a video and HK social media guys got on there and made fun of me. So I'm going to continue to slap that thing like it owes me money. So we got the... Uh, Charge your handle right up there. I got the magazine. Now in the magazine, there are two different ways to release a magazine. If you look right here, there is a button right here that I can depress and it will release the magazine. Cool. However, I almost never use that because it's quite a stretch for me to reach it. So what I end up using is the paddle right here. I grab the paddle and I can release the firearm, the magazine from the firearm in that way. So that is that right there. Trigger. So when it comes to the trigger, um, there are a couple things to be said there. Um, this gun was meant for full auto, right? No, nothing about it. I'm, I'm not going to kind of mince words with that. So the military trigger that it comes with, in my mind, does leave something to be desired. Now, that being said, the NATO trigger that it comes with is drop te tested, drop safe, all that kind of stuff. It's just a little bit heavier with a bit of a longer reset. So what I have right here on this firearm is one of the Zenith Custom Shops um, triggers. It's a little bit lighter with a crisper pull and a shorter reset, and I very much so like it. So running this trigger again you're gonna have to ghost this with me we have a pretty crisp about six seven pound pull okay very short take up back to a seven, six, seven pound kind of crisp pull right there and that's kind of me just kind of judging it based on my little uh my own judgment right there but the reset is a little gritty kind of coming forward it doesn't feel nearly as crisp as something like an AR, like a Geisley trigger, but I'm not expecting it to be, um, that's not what it was designed for, but just realize that the trigger, compared to like an AR, it's gonna be take a little bit more getting used to. I'm definitely not getting like the split times uh, firing single shot as I am with like an AR. You know, AR can do 0 0.11, 0 0.12 splits. On this, I'm closer to, you know, 0 0.17, 0 0.18. Is that plenty fast? Yeah, absolutely. I just like to split hairs when it comes to that type of, when it comes to that type of thing. Okay, moving from the... <clears throat> The uh, pistol right here, the trigger, we can go to the safety. So the safety um, for a lot of people is a problem. So on the left-hand side right here, uh, it's kind of hard to reach like you would in an AR. So what a lot of people end up doing is they end up running their thumb forward on the right side of the gun and they just actuate it that way. And then sometime during shooting, they'll wrap their finger back around. Um, I found that that works very well for me. So I end up running my thumb forward on it. You'll see it in a lot of the videos right here. When I'm about to fire, I have my thumb forward. So that's how you actuate that. We have a manicore adapter right here and then we can uh, then fold our SB brace which can close and it still clears the ejection port which allows us to fire this when it's closed just like we're in an action movie. Good times. <clears throat> so that is kind of a brief overview of this whole gun right here. This is a pretty lightweight weapon right here. This weighs around 5.2 pounds. Now the full-size model weighs a little bit more but you compare that to firearms like the SIG MPX or the Scorpion Evo 3, you're looking at around six, six-ish pounds for both of those firearms. So this is still pretty lightweight. Uh, I understand the barrel's a little bit shorter than those firearms right there. I want to point out that these still do hold their own despite their age. And I think that's what's so cool about them. Again, it kind of comes down to that staying power with this. So great job when it comes to that. Now, there is definitely a robust um, aftermarket's um, <clears throat> You know, selection when it comes to this, whether it be to handguards and stocks and magazines and couplers and triggers and everything. So you're going to be good to go there. Now, when it comes to the sights, I really do like HK sights right a bit. So the front sight is hooded, protected. Rear sight is the drum. It is windage and elevation adjustable. With the drum, you can change the aperture size. So I have it on the largest aperture size. That's what I've been doing most of my shooting with. And I've been rocking this thing for about the last thousand rounds without an optic because I really like the clean look of the uh of the kind of the uh, z5b just looks sexy i guess is a like a better term i kind of feel like neo in the matrix except instead of full auto it's semi unfortunately but nonetheless pretty cool So we've talked about a lot of the pros. Let's get into some cons. 
And before we get into cons, let's talk about the reload. The reload is probably one of the big problems that you're going to have with the Z5P or if you're not familiar with reloads on HK Tap firearms. So I discussed this a lot with James Williamson about how we want to reload this because I've been kind of looking at different ways, trying to speed it up, get it as, you know, be my speed demon self. But what we eventually settled on was this, a military standard that works very well. So what that means is when you fire to an empty magazine, whether that be because you know you fired 30 rounds or you get a click or whatever it is because there is no bolt hold open feature on the Z5P, Z5 or the 9mm MP5s, what you're going to do is you're going to take the charging handle, pull it back, lock it up. Once you've locked it up, you're going to eject the magazine, throw that thing like you hate it. You're going to grab your new mag, load it in. Once you've loaded your fresh mag in, you're going to then release the charging handle. Now there are a couple ways to do it. You can push it down and release it or you can kind of thumb it over. Sometimes people kind of short stroke that, never short stroke. Um, but again, I like to slap this thing like it owes me money because that looks cool and looking cool and wasting energy is what matters, right? So that is how you reload on the Z5P. Now there are many other ways. Um, it should be noted too, now with the magazines, when you have this at 30, it is very difficult to lock into place on, an, on a closed bolt, which is why I default to opening the bolt before I do my reloads. Um, you can do it, just realize it might not be something that's consistent. So what I'm looking for with reloading on the Z5P, Z5, uh, MP5s is consistency, So which is why I lock the bolt back as a quick note for you guys. Um, another thing, when you load the 30, there are witnessing windows on the back of the magazines. So when you hit 30, you'll see the case rim right there. Now you can sometimes load 31. If you load 31, you're 1000% not going to be able to put a 31 round magazine into a closed bolt. It's just, there's just not enough room. So when you're at 30, you, you can still push it in. It might be a little stiff, which is again, why I open the bolt. Now, <clears throat> when you're at 30 rounds, the left round is gonna be the top most round. So when you load it and you don't, want to press check this thing because it can be a little difficult. All you have to do is eject the magazine and check. The round should be on the right side. That will let you know that there are 29 in there and that you loaded the round if you loaded 30 and then you know that you're going to be good to go. And again, that comes down to making sure that you're on top of things with your magazines as far as you're loading them. But in any case, that is one way to do it. And again, a lot of that has been secondhand information from people who have way more time on the uh, MP5 type systems than I do. But that is what I've done so far in my time with it. So what we just talked about is also a con. The, um, the reload on these types of firearms can be difficult and it can be a little bit slower than modern firearms like the MPX and the Sig Scorpion Evo where you can simply, or the UMP45, where you can simply eject the mag, it's on a bolt hold open. So as soon as you insert that mag, you hit a bolt release and you're back up rather than having to lock the charging handle back on your, on your, on your own and slapping and all that type of stuff. So realize that there are more efficient designs out there is it bad? No, it just requires a higher level of training. You need to train on this to make sure that you know what you're doing. A lot of people tend to kind of panic where they like, they go to the last round, they're like, okay, I'm ejecting the magazine, I got the fresh one, ah, crap, now I gotta lock it back. So again, just do the training to make sure that you are deliberate with everything that you're doing when it comes to reloading this firearm. It's just gonna take a little bit more know-how. A couple of normal notes when it comes to uh, MP5 clones like the Z5 and the Z5P is that they're not the best um, options for maritime environments because there's a lot of metal and that type of thing. That was one of the many reasons that the UMP45 was designed was all that polymer fares much better. That and it's a little bit more open fares much better in maritime environments. The UMP45 is also a more reliable firearm overall. Not to say that the Z5 or the Z5P or the MP5 are unreliable firearms. Merely I'm pointing out that there have been advancements in reliability and that the UMP showcases some of this and that it is a very reliable firearm. Nonetheless, this thing has been everywhere and is a very reliable weapon. So don't let me in any way make you think that this is not a reliable weapon. And I think my biggest con when it comes to this is price. It is pricey at 2000. And I do understand that. I know that's where everyone comes in. They're like, well, I was interested until I heard the price. And I understand that, but I do want to say that for what you're getting, you're getting a really nice package. This comes with the optics rail, so you don't have to buy that separate. It comes with three magazines, extra takedown pins, a cleaning kit, all that type of stuff. So it comes with a lot of goodies. And I do think that this is a price that is worth considering. There are 
course, other companies that make um, MP5, MP5K clones, but none of them have the pedigree that the Zenith does or the fit and finish with that pedigree. So I think that the Zenith is a very good option if you're wanting something as close to the H&K original as possible. Also, I think it is probably one of the nicest examples that you can find out there. Now, is this, you know, the, the firearm for you, is this, is this going to be it? It's going to depend on what you do, right? Short, you know, claustrophobic areas, yeah, this thing excels. Short ranges, absolutely. If you're looking to shoot something at, you know, 100 meters plus, probably not the best option, but it could pop, it can do it. It's just there are better options out there. So again, it's going to depend on what you want. No matter what, this thing is super fun. This thing has no recoil. If you are lucky and you're able to get this thing on full auto, um, realize that they are phenomenal. Now, if you have an SOT or something like that, um, then you can have Zenith, the Zenith Custom Shop, mill this out so that it can accept full auto because as it is imported, you cannot just slap on a full auto trigger group and be good to go. There are some things that have to be done so that this thing can be imported, but Zenith Custom Shop can do that work for you. Or if your department has MP5s that are just starting to chug along, Zenith Custom Shop can, can again fix those up for you, and they've done that for quite a few departments. So there's a lot of good things to be said about this. Ultimately, it just looks cool. I just love the look of this. I don't know what it is, but I just really ended up liking this pistol quite a bit. I've been shooting it quite a lot, just with irons, with an Omega 9K on there. I just feel awesome. I just feel good shooting this. It just makes me feel happy. It makes me feel good every time I slap it. I don't know, maybe it's anger management or something like that. But this is a cool firearm, guys. And no matter what, shooting this is cool and all that type of thing. But if you don't have training, you're not going to look cool shooting this. So, guys, make sure that you get training. There are many different companies to go through. The companies that I typically recommend are Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Helios Strategic, Esoteric. In fact, I'll be at a dual Cogworks and Helios Strategic course this weekend. Um, so if you're there, I'll see you. If you missed it, I'll be at many more courses in the near future. But get that training, guys. Get out there. Actually do things. Um, Thank you for watching. If you guys have any comments on the MP5 platform, the Z5P or the Z5, please get in there. I know some of you have carried these overseas. I'd love to hear about your experiences with them. Guys, as always, stay cool. Thank you for watching. I've got nothing else for you. Okay, guys. Final note for you guys um, is time. There is nothing more important in your life uh, than time. And I think uh, for a lot of people, that takes them a, a while to realize that a lot of people waste their time, whether it be um, with an absurd amount of video games, not, not that video games are bad, but an absurd amount of video games, an absurd amount of TV or movies, or hanging with toxic people or relace, wasting their life with relationships that aren't going anywhere. Um, your time is so valuable. So value yourself and value your time and do good things with it. Be deliberate with your time because that's going to make your life much better. Because you don't want to get uh, to a point, uh, you know, later in age where you look back and realize that you wasted a portion of your life simply because you didn't manage your time well or you wasted it on endeavors that were ultimately uh, a waste of time. So time is what matters. Now, guys, if you've getting, gotten this far, you are my ultra fans. And, uh, you, you know, you guys know I always give you a little thing. Now, before we hit that, Big Daddy Unlimited, you guys know I'm a supporter of them. Big thing is it's a subscription service where you can buy firearm stuff for much cheaper. Um, is it going to be worth it to you? It depends on how often you buy things. If you only buy things once a year, you're probably not going to get your money's worth. If you're buying things a couple times a year, you're probably going to end up saving money doing it. So again, that's for you to find out. Use my link right in my description. Go through, check it out if you like it. Okay, if you don't, no skin off my teeth. Biggest thing is it has a really weird name. I know I've asked them to change it, but no big deal. Okay, final note. I want for you to name for me your favorite sci-fi movie. Favorite sci-fi movie. We'll go with that. Interst uh, <clears throat> Interstellar for me, by far. Matthew McConaughey, just so wonderful.